Welcome back to the Campus Bible Fellowship channel and this series on antidotes to anxiety. Today we'll be talking about perfectionism and how it can rob you of peace. Are you a perfectionist? Do you have anxiety until whatever you're doing is perfect? Are you displeased when something has flaws? Is 99% just, just not good enough? Hello, my name is Mary Amesbury and I'm a recovering perfectionist. Everything in this video, I assure you, I've preached to myself first. Perfectionism is not just a desire to perform well. It's a driving need to do things perfectly and to not be satisfied with anything less than perfect. It produces crippling anxiety and self-doubt. Wanting to do quality work is a good thing, especially if the work is truly for the glory of God. Yet, we know that a pursuit of quality can cross a line and become destructive. Often the difference is the motivation behind the pursuit of excellence. The following statements might represent the perfectionist mindset. If I'm perfect, no one can judge me. If I can manage to not say or do the wrong thing, I can be worthy of love and acceptance. People will only respect me if I'm perfect. If I'm perfect, then I'll be worthy of self-esteem. If I focus on all the little details, I can keep myself from failing. By being a perfectionist, I can control what happens to me and my family. My value and worth are based on my accomplishments. The unpleasant truth is that the root of our perfectionist tendencies is often self-protection and pride. If we can be perfect, the perfectionist thinking goes, other people and even God will have to approve of us. In the time of Jesus, it was easy to pick out a perfectionist. They were the Pharisees who were such sticklers for the law that they developed an exhausting set of rules that were far more exacting than what God had, had given to Moses for the people of Israel. The Pharisees sought to show devotion to God by fulfilling the law to the letter and beyond. In their thinking, this would obligate God to accept them, and they despised the fallible, ordinary Jew. Jesus, on the other hand, was full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, John 1.17. Maybe that was one reason the Pharisees hated Jesus so much. Jesus taught that they weren't good enough to merit God's approval. For a diehard perfectionist, that was an affront. Their pride took a hit. The perfectionist motto is, I don't need any help. I can be good enough on my own. But what does the gospel say? 1 John 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The point of the gospel is that we're not good enough. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We cannot please God or attain heaven by the sin-encrusted works of the flesh. Our own perfection is insufficient. God must provide righteousness for us. He did this in Jesus Christ. The perfect Jesus became our sin bearer. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He is made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Colossians 2, 13 through 14. Jesus purchased our perfect righteousness by living a sinless life, shedding his blood and dying to atone for our sin, and then rising from the dead. When God the Father looks at Christians, he sees us in Christ, clothed with imputed righteousness of Jesus. When I strive in my flesh to be perfect in all aspects of my life, I'm trying to please the eternal God on my terms, not on His. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. James 4, 6. Perfectionism leaves no room for grace, but grace is essential to be right with God. Stand fast, therefore, 
in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 4 through 5. So what can I do to rein in my perfectionism and walk in grace? Number one, determine the truth about your perfectionism. Does your pursuit of perfection draw you closer to God and other people? Not likely. Can you totally control your outcomes? Not likely. Number two, understand your motivations for being a perfectionist. Is your primary motivation to serve and protect self? or to glorify God? Does pride have a part in your perfectionism? Number three, seek to understand God's grace on a deeper level. Strive to be both a giver and a receiver of grace. Commit to your mind such grace passages as Ephesians 2, 4 through 9, Galatians 2, 20 through chapter 3, verse 3, Romans 4, 16, Romans 11, 5 through 6, 1 Corinthians 15, 9 through 10, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, Titus 3, 3 through 7, and Hebrews 4, 15 through 16. Number four, remove the word perfect from your vocabulary unless you're speaking about God. Quit obsessing about how you could have done something better. Instead, commit it to God in prayer and learn to be okay with good enough for less important tasks and learn to move on from your perceived failures. Remember, your worth is in Christ and not based on your performance. That's it for today. If you found this video helpful, drop a note in the comments or share it with someone else. Please subscribe to the channel to be alerted when new videos are posted. Bye for now.